This is the savanna five million years ago. The ancient shroud is almost no different from the modern one. Once upon a time, this place was covered with dense, boundless forests and impenetrable jungle. Now, due to climate change, these vast territories occupy a quarter of the ancient planet. Savannah cannot be called a dead desert. Life is also vibrant here. Just like in the thicket of the forest, in the mountains or on the underwater reefs of the world's oceans. Pliocene Epoch A time of global change in the world of flora and fauna. The world continues to change without stopping for a second. Pliocene Epoch is the final epoch of the Neogene period. It was a time of sharp cooling of our planet. The rich fauna suffered significant losses. Many species of animals that massively inhabited the Earth disappeared in short periods of time. According to one version of scientists, cooling played a major role in this. Others believe that increased interspecific competition caused the extinction of many ancient animals. This is a musk ox. A unique animal originally from the Ice Age, outliving mammoths by 7,000 years. The musk ox is happy about the cold weather. Thick fur and unpretentiousness in food create complete comfort for this animal. Musk oxen are the most formidable mammals not only in the Pliocene. These animals have survived to this day and still live in four national parks and reserves. From the name itself, it follows that the musk ox combines the characteristics of a bull and a sheep. Powerful, incredibly hard horns by the heritage of bulls. The animal got its short tail, which is hidden in thick fur, from rams. And although the musk ox is more similar in appearance to a bull, the closest relative of this animal is the mountain sheep. The musk ox's fur is thick and long, in some places it can reach one meter. Fur covers the entire animal, with the exception of the nose, lips, horns, and hoofs. The body weight of a musk ox can reach from 300 to 650 kilograms. This species is protected by the states of its owners. Among bovid American migrants in the fauna of North Asia were the musk ox and sorgelia. It was a large animal with an elongated muzzle. It resembled a modern wild goat. The horns were short and rounded at the ends. The animal fed on trees and shrubs. Against the general background of the relatively smooth evolution of Pliocene mammals, two events stand out that were of fundamental importance for the subsequent history of the Earth's biocenoses. The first of them is the appearance in northern Eurasia of the Vole family whose representatives in the small size class have mastered feeding on the green mass of plants. This event is associated with the formation of a fundamentally new zonal type of communities, meadow steppes. However, voles themselves played and continue to play a significant role in the formation of soils and plant associations in the steppe zone of the northern hemisphere. Another even more important, and perhaps related to the first event, is the appearance of man. For communities of plants and animals on Earth, the increase in the number and population diversity of the genus Homo had catastrophic consequences. In the Pliocene era, South and North America were favored by glyptodonts. These are giant fossil armadillos, about three meters high and weighing more than two tons. The appearance of the Dithodont least of all resembled mammals. The huge dome-shaped shell made the glyptodont look like a land turtle. Glyptodont was a herbivore. This is evidenced by the absence of fangs and incisors in the animal. The armadillo's main defense against predators was its tail, covered with hard bone plates, with a club at the end. Waving such weapons, the glyptodont fought off enemies, of which there were many in the animal world of the Pliocene. In the Pliocene, grass continued to serve as an inexhaustible source of food for herbivores. 
Many animals that ate leaves died out, and more highly organized ruminants took their place. In Europe and Asia, vast grassy plains provided shelter for huge numbers of buffalo, deer, gazelles, and early varieties of antelope. The prairies of North America were inhabited by huge herds of deer, camels, horses, mastodons, and pronghorns. There were also short-necked giraffes, grazing among vast herds of other herbivores. Like other ruminants, giraffes ate grass. Gradually, the giraffe's necks lengthened, and these animals began to get their food from the treetops. The first hippopotamuses appeared in the Pliocene. Perhaps they descended from some pig-like ancestors. Researchers were able to find out that in those ancient times, several species of these fauna representatives lived on the Earth. Only two species of hippopotamuses have survived to this day, and both species live in Africa. It is assumed that hippos were originally forest animals, but a sharp decrease in the number of trees forced these animals to leave their favorite places and settle near water sources. Small and medium-sized predators lived in packs and hunted in groups of several individuals, creating pens and ambushes. This hunting strategy is still widespread today. For example, African wild dogs hunt in small packs. Usually no more than seven or eight animals. The victim is identified in advance, before the chase begins. As a rule, this is a still fragile cub from a grazing herd or a weak, sickly-looking animal. The strategy itself is very simple. The victim is separated from the herd and then relentlessly pursued until it is exhausted. When the poor animal slows down, the pack surrounds the prey and pushes it to the ground, with individual members of the pack grabbing the prey by different parts of the body, for the nose, tail, and belly. Prey can vary in size, but a small pack of African wild dogs can kill a zebra ten times the weight of any of its members. In the late Miocene and early Pliocene, South America was still a sanctuary for some species of unusual, toothless mammals. These were incomplete teeth. These included the armadillos, tree sloths, and anteaters. Among these creatures there were also large herbivores. For example, Toxodon. With its short limbs and wide three-toed feet, this animal resembled a rhinoceros. However, the placement of its nose, eyes, and ears suggests that it spent most of its life in the water, like a hippopotamus. The most famous carnivore of the Pliocene is considered to be the saber-toothed tiger, Smilodon, which lived in the Northern Hemisphere. A distinctive feature of this representative of the feline family were the huge fangs protruding from its upper jaw. Pointed fangs about 18 centimeters long served as weapons for Smilodon. Having caught up with its prey, the Smilodon plunged its fangs into the belly or throat of the victim and then also used these fangs to cut the prey into pieces. With its size, Smilodon resembled a modern lion or armor tiger. Moreover, the predator could weigh from 160 to 400 kilograms. In total, scientists were able to count five species of Smilodon, but none of these tigers survive to this day. Five million years ago, Ardipithecus cadaba lived on the territory of modern Ethiopia. This species was an intermediate link between apes and humans. The structure of the bones of Ardipithecus indicates the vertical position of the body when walking. The animal was already trying to walk on its hind legs. Ananchus appeared five million years ago. These are today extinct proboscis animals. The height of the distant ancestors of elephants reached three and a half meters. The skull was short, high and narrow. The length of the upper tusks was up to three meters. Adult Ananchus did not have lower tusks. Stegotetrabelodons. 
These animals reached for meters in height and 12 tons of weight. These animals with a difficult name did not live long and within a short period became completely extinct. Maharits The predators had relatively short fangs, weighed up to 220 kilograms, and hunted mastodons. The quest to see cow had a length of up to 9 meters and a weight of up to 10 tons. The Pliocene animal had hoofs at the ends of short limbs. The cow had no teeth. Food was chewed in the mouth with two plates. The cow moved along the bottom, moving its front legs, or used a fin. This animal lived in shallow waters. Presumably it was a herd animal. Towards the end of the Pliocene, a narrow isthmus formed between North and South America, restoring the connection between the animal world of these two continents. Two-way traffic immediately arose across the isthmus, and a grandiose migration of mammals began. Neurologus This ancient relative of the hare was the size of a dog and could weigh up to 23 kilograms. The ancient animal lived on the island of Mallorca, and in the absence of predators, it became very large, well-fed and sedentary. Among the rodents were horned gophers. Gophers lived in burrows. It is unclear why these animals used horns, either for mating displays or for protection from predators. Servalces had a body length of up to 3 meters, a weight of up to 700 kilograms, and horns up to 2 meters wide. Hadrocura seals were up to two and a half meters long and fed on crustaceans and mollusks. Dromornis birds were up to three meters tall and weighed up to 500 kilograms. Dromornis were herbivores and could not fly. Five and a half million years ago, Thorpe Jarnarsson's crocodile appeared. It was the largest species of crocodiles, up to seven and a half meters long. This predator differed from other species of crocodiles by its wide muzzle. Presumably, the crocodile fed on human ancestors. There are no traces of the teeth of this animal on the bones of the ape people. But it is possible that Thorpe Jarnarsson's crocodile simply swallowed them whole. The Laophus viper could reach a length of 3 or 4 meters and weigh up to 26 kilograms. This made the Laophus snake the largest and most venomous viper in history. The Bluff Downs giant python could be up to 10 meters long and preyed on mammals, birds, and other reptiles. In Pliocene times, there were a large number of antelopes. Many were similar in body composition to bulls. At the end of the Pliocene era, Leptobos lived, which were close in structure to real bulls. In the Pliocene, the ancestors of camels and llamas developed elastic pads on their legs instead of hoofs, calluses. At this time, camels moved from North America to Eurasia, and llamas to South America. Pigs were numerous in Neopliocene times. A characteristic feature of the late Pliocene was the appearance of some well-known megafauna. The woolly rhinoceros and mammoth are distributed in Eurasia and North America. These large animals survived until the Pleistocene era, when they became extinct due to climate change and collision with modern humans. At the beginning of the Pliocene era, the first hippopotamuses appeared, but Anthracotherium and giant pigs no longer existed on Earth. Titanis this prehistoric bird was certainly impressive. Adults reached a height of two and a half meters and weighed about 140 kilograms. Titanis wallery of the early Pleistocene closely resembled its theropod dinosaur ancestors, which went extinct 60 million years before the appearance of this bird. Giant birds of prey and theropods have a fairly similar structure. Locomotion on two legs, small forelimbs, and a massive head. Australia was isolated from other continents. Consequently, no significant changes in the fauna occurred there. Thank you for watching our episode. 
give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting releases from the Real Unreal channel.